This is The Stuff Dreams Are Made Of. I'm writer-collector Ryan Condal. And I'm writer-collector Dave Mandel. And this week, the first half of The Stuff Dreams Are Made Of is brought to you by PropStore. PropStore.com. There's an ad a-coming. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I'm not Just sure what I'm wait. supposed to say. Buckle sponsor up. sponsor of the first half of The Stuff Dreams Are Made Of. Uh, how you doing, Ryan? Very good, Dave. Uh, I'm I'm a bit exhausted. It's been it's been a month of uh, of auction fever. I, 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 I we have a very important auction announcement, but I need to start with an apology, both to you and oh. to the stuff dreams are made of listeners. Okay. Uh, our last episode that aired, if I'm getting the order correctly, was the Greg Jean preview episode, and normally we record. Uh, like usually my mornings or afternoons and your evenings. And normally yeah. I'm a late night guy and I'm very excited somehow to record my nights, your mornings. But for some reason on that last episode, I don't know, I guess I, my sleep was wherever it was. I don't know if it was daylight savings or what, but I looked back on that Greg Jean preview episode and I look like I'm falling asleep during the episode and I'm, I'm talking and I am engaging, but I am yawning. I don't know if there's any world in which Bart's able to cut the yawning out, but I am yawning every four seconds nope, and, we're I, leaving and, it I, in. and I'm just, we're I apologize. Um, I think we need a new sponsor, which is either cocaine or Adderall or something, but, uh, it was, no dose. it was, yeah, it was brutal. Yeah. Br so my daughter, the, the prescription my daughter drinks, pro vigil. I was yeah, saying my yeah. daughter drinks some crazy, like thing with 200 milligrams of caffeine in it that I think is going to give her a stroke. Like it's not white claw. Cause I know that has booze, but okay. it's got some crazy that name. Prime, that one that everybody's it's not even prime. My son drinks prime and that's disgusting, but she All drinks right. one and, it, and she drinks it and it smells so you can smell the sugar. I, I, I never knew you could smell sugar. It's like, yeah. it's like liquid cotton candy. Anyway, I don't know what it Gorilla is. Gorilla sweat. Obviously, yeah, yeah. they're not going to yeah. be a sponsor or maybe they will, but uh, no, on. but uh, I should have drank like two of those. But uh, anyway, so an apology to the Stuff Dreams Are Made of audience and to you. And by the way, you were also tired, but you had more of a reason I to be tired. I had a good reason to be. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, but, I think, uh, I, I yeah. don't know. I'm, I'm definitely the more subdued of the two of us. So I think, I think whenever even your low energy episodes, you're probably Probably higher energy than I am. It's certainly but I, possible, but I was definitely I, like, dear God, it really no, struck I, me. I did not yeah. notice it for whatever it's yeah. worth. And yeah, Rob sort of balanced things out, the delightful Rob Klein. And always lovely, his, always uh, lovely. But my God, I should apologize to him as well. So I, I it, so. It, it, yeah, we do. I do apologize. Um, but we do have a very big announcement. So let's start with maybe that because we were talking about auctions and whatnot. And yes. obviously we have now covered the prop store auction, the treasures of uh, Planet treasures. Hollywood, treasures uh, from Heritage and the Greg Jean auction. So it's been a ridiculous month and it has been wild and wooly. Everybody's um, bankrupt. Yeah, everybody's bankrupt and just sort of trying to like, there's a lot of mad dash selling. And so, you know, I think that the after the fact, there's a lot of that too. And we want to talk about all of that. We want to talk about, we want to talk about, the auctions, what it meant to have so many auctions, what we thought of the results, all of these things. Do we think things were canceled out? What do some of these numbers mean? All of these things. And so we wanted to announce a very special uh, auction follow-up live episode on uh, Sunday, April 7th. We're going to do another live episode at 12 noon Pacific time. And that's going to be what, 8 p.m.? Uh, that's 8 p.m. 8 p.m. now British summertime. British summertime. In, uh, Lovely. In in London, the UK, and that would also be 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern, Eastern Daylight Time as well. So, so that, we again, is April 7th, Sunday, Sunday April. April 7th, uh, right on the tail end of Ramadan uh, So and spring break here uh, in Los Angeles. Um, so please join us. We'll have a whole bunch of uh, notices, but on our YouTube channel, please go there, subscribe to the YouTube channel, so you'll always know when we're going to do a live episode. But that's Sunday, April 7th. Uh, 12 noon Pacific, uh, 3 p.m. Uh, East Coast, uh, and I don't even know. What did we say? 8 p.m. your time? Is that right? Did I yes. That all right? Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's 3 p.m. Oh. Eastern time. What did yeah, you say? I said 5 p.m. Oh, that's no, 3 p.m. Okay. Yeah. So not, not 3 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. 3 p.m. Eastern, yeah. 12 Pacific. We've confused uh, you perfectly. I think it's fantastic. Eight uh, London yeah. time. One, yes. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We will also post this on the 50, feed because we can't 20, be trusted to. Two, three, four, seven, eight, 14, 18. Yeah. Um, what, uh, what's new in props? Anything new in props? 
Oh, I've I've got I've got nothing. I'm so tapped out, Dave. Well, if, if we're not talking about auction wins and things like that, there's so much to talk about, but we can't talk about it because we're going to talk about, about it on the, on, on the live episode. Uh, that's very funny. I don't even know when this is airing. I was going to say, by the way, FYI, I have a bunch of stuff coming up. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry, Prop Store in Heritage Auctions comic art art auction. Uh, actually, oh, under wow. my name, the Dave Mandel Collection. But, but I, for all I know, it's already it's already may have. Oh, already are they happened. are they calling it the Dave Mandel Collection? Not the whole thing, but I did let them use my name on my individual pieces to see. Oh, wow! Either oh, okay. goose sales or and is that sales? Is yeah. that oh is that that's tonight then? It's uh it's the April seventh uh. uh Technically, or the, not tonight, but the, the 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 day of our live auction, right? I think so, or but I'm, I episode. think some of my stuff is on starts in the the first day, which I think is the fourth. I don't know. Uh, okay, I think is the fourth, so maybe it's the fourth through the seventh at Heritage Auctions. Brought to you by Prop Store, PropStore dot com. That's um, all very. So yeah, I have got that. So that's sort of helping me to continue. So what's to, in there, Dave? Can you can uh, you yeah, give us a couple a of really nice pieces? Incredible, uh, really nice. If I say so myself, well, I, we'll I, be the judge of that. Yeah, a wonderful John that. Byrne uh, X Men Alpha Flight page that I think is really oh, good. good. Okay. Um, and I think one of the I think one of the best pieces I've ever put in, which is uh, well, two pieces. Um, there's the Daredevil uh 190 cover by frank miller with electra oh. and daredevil on the cover that's a pretty oh, great wow. one and a killer page from giant size x-men one with a half page splash where the krakoa island takes the monster form and it's oh, all nice. the x-men old yeah. and new uh going up against krakoa i don't oh, know that's a big deal uh, yeah it's a pretty good one if i say what, so myself yeah it, do you, in recent memory yeah. has there been another giant size page that's even gone in pages the... have the pages have shown up there have been a, definitely a couple of pages always uh there's always people interested in the those early chapters which are the first appearances of yeah. those various characters um so like you know not, it's not the first appearance of wolverine but when wolverine joins the x-men first appearance of nightcrawler first appearance of colossus you know so those are yeah. first appearances you know in those those sections is that storm too i think storm is a first appearance yeah. as well banshee isn't sunfire isn't because i think he appeared earlier in x-men runs so you get those other new characters and thunderbird who then dies the, oh yeah uh, the native american yeah. john proudstar character so you get their first appearances and there have definitely been some okay decent pages you know there's a lot of these weird fight pages with like giant crabs and stuff on the island that have popped up from time to time but this is from the big battle this is basically krakoa reveals itself the island is a mutant spoiler alert um and uh and that's in there so check out the dave mandel collection for sale in uh, Heritage Auctions, brought to you by Prop Store. Um, and talking about comic art, actually, I think is a good uh, segue, yeah. dare I say, into our first guest. Uh, our first guest is the wonderful Felix Liu, who uh, basically is the host of his own Felix Comic Art podcast and sells comic art. He's a comic art uh, representative. He's not exactly a dealer. He represents a lot of artists at, that he sells through FelixComicArt.com. Um, and, yeah, Felix, and how does that, how does that uh, work, Dave? Because I know we've mentioned that before. I think it's a percentage like, for him. I think he's like okay. a like a gallery. He, he approaches an artist that he's a fan of. Yeah, Felix, says, I think, has very much made a decision not to really be you know dealing or trafficking in like a lot of the stuff that we're, like things like I'm putting into auction. He collects comic art, but he really decided to assemble sort of a roster of. I think at the time, a lot of guys that were he was sort of, you know, using his own taste and picking a lot of uh, newer comic artists, guys that were beginning to have careers and doing some really interesting work that he thought were great. And he's really guided, I think, helped guide both their careers. But, you know, dare I say, to whatever extent he participates in that, but really helped build markets for them. I mean, you have some of these guys now selling, you know, complete issues and starting to see some larger money, you know, even though they are newer mm. guys and, uh, you know, very much his eye, his taste. And I think it's really incredible. But what's really interesting is I've known Felix forever. He has finally started listening to our podcast. And the reason he didn't Poor listen man. for the longest time was he was scared he would buy a prop <laughs> and he started listening and guess what? He bought a prop. And so yeah. let's welcome to the show. Uh, first time prop buyer uh, and big time comic art collector and uh, representative dealer. Uh, Felix Faller yeah. into the abyss. Yes. Faller into the abyss. Felix Liu. Uh, hey, Felix, how are you today? Great. Thanks for uh, having me on. I, I, I sort of want to introduce myself, too. I'm collector, collector Felix Liu. 
I'm not a writer, so I have to. I think I have to repeat that. Yeah. You're, Very good. You're a Luddite. Uh, you good. said before, uh, yep. non-writer, yep. viewer. Non-writer. You're a viewer. You're a viewer. Yeah, viewer well, collector, like Felix Lou. Yeah, viewer there you collector. go. And, you used to and, be and fellow podcaster, Dave. Yes, podcaster. And also, didn't you used to sort of work in like on the development side a little bit of uh, like many, in your many, old, years many, many years so, ago? Yeah. So, so like when Ryan oh. was starting out, you know, I would have read his script and done some coverage on it or something, you know. So yeah, ruined. Maybe my he read Galahad, or was that one of yours, Ryan? Was yeah. that Galahad? Yeah, 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 that's the one that was yeah. running around. That was your, that was your first, right? That was yeah. your put you on the map. Yeah. Uh, very, very cool. Yeah. Uh, Larry uh, Gordon back in the day. Oh, wow. Yeah. I met yeah. him at some point. Yeah. yeah. Not, not Predator or uh, Die Hard. Uh, Predator 2, uh, the super uh, point break. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that, that era of uh, Largo entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. I like, yeah, I yeah. like point break. I'm yeah. going to pass on the super. Uh, maybe yeah. I like point Predator break. Two. And I'm yeah. a big fan of Predator 2. I think that movie is very underrated. Really? Predator 2. Was, I'll have yes. to go back and check that out. When yeah. I was yeah. there during the uh, whole, uh, sort of post Batman 89 Batman you know comic book acquiring uh, yep. property era yeah is that when they had Watchmen? Is that yep, what, yep. yep they had I, Watchmen. I was, there, I was there with the, Watchmen. The Sam and, and, Ham draft of Watchmen. Oh yes, wow. Uh, which, which, we won't, which we won't talk about. It uh, exists. And, I have a copy of it somewhere, yeah. And uh they are they're the ones who brought Dark Horse into Hollywood back then. Oh okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, 92, okay. 93 around that yeah. So, and were they leaning on you a lot for uh, for your comic book knowledge at that point? Uh, insofar as I would run to Golden Apple to pick up their books. Yeah. Yeah. But were you reading? Were you an were active they? comic oh, reader course, at that point? Course, yeah, yeah. Of, course, of course. But they never course. said to you, what do you like or any of that kind of stuff? Well, sure. But, you know, not that it matters. Really. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so, your comic book bona fides speak for themselves you are mm. running right now uh i have a you have your own podcast as we said you run a uh you represent a whole bunch of artists you sell comic art original comic art which i collect and that's something right. we've talked right. about and your, your audience I, is wondering like who is this guy what the no, hell is he doing on the I show? Think there's this crossover. is the there's this crossover. is the nader of stuff dreams are made of i'm sorry you you guys really are scraping the bottom of the barrel but i am i am a fan so i am excited uh, look, I, I'm just going to simply say Anthony Daniels was not available again. He uh, he he politely declined he to passed. reappear. Um, but uh, but you have been connected to the movie industry. You are a movie fan. I know that we talk about movies you and I all the time. And you kind of were a little slow, perhaps, to start listening to this fine podcast. But you had a reason for not yes. listening to this yes. podcast, yes, which absolutely you were scared. You want to talk about that fear? One hundred percent. Uh, but before I get into that, I yeah, do want to say that um, I may not be entirely unqualified to be on this podcast because I think I do sort of meet the bare minimum requirement. Again, as a way of establishing my credentials or bona fides, uh, I have been to Skywalker Ranch, home of the Lucasfilm Archive. Oh, multiple so everyone, times so myself. then everyone on this podcast has been. Oh, wait yeah, a second, fuck you, Felix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, why? Why? I mean, I assume we've all been there, right? Yeah. Um, if you haven't listened, just assume we've all been there. Yeah. Have Have I Have I replaced Ryan now? I, I don't it's, know. It's like Titanic for me at this point. I I could have gone a m- multiple times. Now I'm just not going because I didn't see Titanic and I'm not going to see Titanic. And I I you should really watch Titanic. Archive. I watched it the other <laughs> day. Gonna, it's really good. I'm it's not really going to go. Yeah. I'm not I'm not going to watch Titanic. I'm not going to the Lucasfilm archives. That's it. That's my last word on it. But uh, Dave, yes, I listened to the first few episodes and i really liked it and it's a it's dangerous it's a slippery slope i could feel uh it coming on you know that collector uh you know we all have the collector gene but you know there's various i guess branches or subcategories i could feel that one getting the the it's a spectrum of sickness felix right right and um i'm sort of like the alternate universe ryan in that I am very passionate about one hobby, and I might dabble in another, but I can't do both. And uh, if I listen to this podcast more, uh, it could have been very, very dangerous for me. So I stopped listening, uh, even though I'm sure it was great. And I am a David Mandel content fan. I mean, this goes back like 20 years ago. And I knew Dave, but I'm, I don't play video games. I, I, I'm not a gamer. And... um one of the kids who worked for me said he loved this show on TBS. It was uh, 
Steve and Dave's video game explosion? Uh, Dave and Steve's. I had top billing. <laughs> <laughs> I was giving you a chance to correct that, guy, as, as I knew you would. That's um, in the contract. Uh, but uh, I, I, I even watch that stupid show. So I, I am your, uh, you know, ideal demographic. And so, I, yes, I made the conscious decision to avoid. Not to. Yeah, because the the point. fear is real, and I do I think we, I do understand that, which is you are you have that collector thing, and all of a sudden we're talking about something that is there in front of you, and you kind of want it but don't want it, and don't well, want to. It, yeah, it, it, it's like any of this stuff, and I, I know you guys can relate. It becomes an all or nothing proposition, and I can only afford one expensive hobby, and I'm not talking just monetarily, but in terms of my mental space, mental energy. Um, and you know, I've devoted, I've, I've devoted my 10,000 hours to comic art. I don't have another 10,000 hours for yeah. movie props, or if I did, I don't know that I would want to use it for something dumb like this again. And then, you know, you, ha you have to build the relationships. You have to start from scratch. Um, I have a huge leg up, uh, which I appreciate because I know, I know you guys, but all of it is just, um, yeah, I would argue just, just, it feels like a bad idea. I would argue if you listen to this podcast, yeah. you only have to do like 9,600 hours. You get like, a, yeah. this is like a 400 hour coupon of like this getting is a good, you somewhere. a good master yeah. class, you know, crash course, you know, in it. For sure. Um, for sure. But do you find, I mean, I understand the overwhelming thought process and believe me, it's not that uh, movie props are cheap they certainly aren't although there is obviously a wide variety and we often talk about there are lower end things obviously there are big giant star wars size things but there's a range have did you find as you kind of decided to sort of poke your toe in and we'll get to the details of that in a minute or two or an hour or two um did you find that the crazy prices that have been going on in the comic art world partially made you start to think about movie props again was that some of the tie-in or is it no, was it just no. the overall attraction so it wasn't what because in no i think we can agree comic art especially like every other collectible during the uh the pandemic and whatnot really went like triple nuts i mean it definitely cuckoo yeah but yeah things i was wanted about to, yeah i was about to toe into comic art and i you know i've struggled with this on the other side of the fence felix is like i'm i'm surrounded by comic art collectors you know it, uh david and then you know our friend kelvin um and i hear about it all the time and i grew up with all you know all those and you those, see stuff the, you like the all the stuff. time too. yeah you all, see all, things and you all the time yeah. yeah yeah and i i've 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 dabbled in the sense that like i have things that are on the fringe of comic art like i bought a mignola help boy painting uh you know 10 years ago because i've always loved that character um but it was actually only this year where i properly bought my first true what would i would call comic book art and it was a it was a a, a spread of two hellboy pages we did talk about on the podcast from uh w one of the uh the early uh stories the uh, the wolves of saint august and i love them they're they're wonderful pages it's action it's you know great great frames of hellboy and the old mignola hellboy where the you know the shading was all good and the head was super detailed and everything and i love them and i got them home and i was really terrified <laughs> that this was going to be a slippery slope into into nowhere um but thankfully i've 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 been i've been pretty reserved but i know at some point i am going to buy those like top three top five things that i've always wanted from from the comics world and i, I just know something is going to come along it's going to be a slow movie year or whatever and i'm just going to you know, i'm going to go for it um but, but occasionally uh, but, you have Ryan asked about something like, what's this going to go for? Or what would something like that be? Sure. And when we've said like, well, that's going to be a hundred thousand dollars yeah. in a weird way, that number has stopped you. Not, not that you don't, you know, you ha you're good for the money. Just like, uh, I don't know. So, yeah, yeah. You don't want, it's tough. You don't want your first piece to be, you know, a hundred that, I mean, I was yeah. in, I was it's in the scary. comic art hobby and I'm assuming this applies. I mean, it definitely applies to me in props as well, which is every phase of your life as a collector. And I don't tell me if the, you guys went through this, every phase of my life as a collector at any given point, there was what I thought my high was. Meaning when I first started buying comic art, it just seemed like a thousand dollars was my high. And then eventually it was 2,500 and eventually it was five and then 10 you seemed like a huge child. number. No, I know, I know. And the same thing though is true in props, which is, you know, there were moments where, you know, 
ten thousand seemed like the most one would ever pay for a prop, and one and one, and then it was like okay, twenty thousand or twenty five thousand, and there was a long while where twenty five thousand felt like the top of the prop market. You know what I mean? Where like you know big things were going for twenty five thousand dollars. I don't remember and, that either. Yeah, no. Go, okay, well, I'm please, sorry. Please but, continue. But you know, you understand what I'm saying is you you create yes. these artificial. Yes. I don't know, barriers or something. Yes, I've been around long enough that, yeah. that the 100K barrier in in movie props was only studio scale Star Wars props. That was the only right. thing. Giant, that insane it. things. Yeah, yes. yeah, right. Right. And, then and now, and now day, it's sort yeah. of, it's everything you want. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that obviously it happens um, and there's nothing you can do about it. But there are just those those phases in life and you 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 try and stick to them, at least I guess as long as you can. But yeah, it uh it Good does luck. fall apart. Yeah, no, I know. I well, know. I think I think to me the most impressive thing about Dave isn't that he can afford both hobbies, but that he has the bandwidth for both. You know, I I mentioned that earlier. I just I you know, you have to be on top of uh, knowing everyone and then keeping your ear to the ground and, and following chat groups and message boards and whatnot. I I'm good I can handle one. That's it. You know? So <laughs> so, actually... so like like the, 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 the money aside, it doesn't matter. I I can only handle one. And I get the bandwidth thing. I mean, I, I say this coming from the outside, and I, I I know you know a tiny tiny you know one percent of of what you guys know about uh, comic art, and a lot of that's just from osmosis and you know being around and listening and being interested. But I feel like that's actually more true, Felix, in in your side of the hobby and the comic art, because the the prop stuff just it doesn't trade it doesn't trade privately anymore it just doesn't i mean sure a thing comes up every once in a while but i think because of there is so much comic art and i think that's part of the fun of your hobby is there there is so much to see and look at and enjoy and there's so much churn in so many different auction houses there's always something going on it really does keep you engaged whereas what we do especially with the narrow band of movies and and the per period of film that we're interested in it's really the stuff that everybody wants so it just doesn't come around very often and now everybody is putting it into auction because everybody wants top top dollar for it so I, while I do appreciate what you're talking about, I actually think that's more of what would hold me back from coming into your world because there's so much. You can't just log into Heritage once every quarter. There, there is a there's a much larger universe to follow if you want to be on top of the great things that come available. Whereas I, I think with movie props, that's not quite as true anymore. But you, you would, tell me, Dave. I would make the argument that I think, I, look, and Felix, you can agree or disagree. I think certainly the auctions you know, especially heritage four times a year, plus a European auction. So usually at least five times a year. I don't know if they're doing two European auctions. So five big comic art auctions, and you have a couple of the other companies doing auctions as well. Auctions are very much definitely driving the hobby right now on the, on the, the comic art side, much as they are on the prop side as well. The biggest difference that in I think of in my mind, and obviously there are props that don't grow on trees. There are definitively things like, I mean, but by the way, even let's look at the, the crazy X-Wing where, you know, one showed up and it was the pyro and we all sort of felt like we're never going to see this again until less than a year later when the hero shows up. But there is still that thing in comic art, which is technically speaking, they are one of a kind, meaning if you want the cover to blank, if you want the cover to x-men you know whatever 150 there is one version there is one penciled and ink yes. version of that cover and it's either in an auction in somebody's collection or has never shown itself which means it's out there and there's a different something to that as opposed to if you're looking for a captain kirk tunic there are a bunch of them we've seen auctions with multiples in it and i do think that's a difference between the two hobbies, the notion of one of a kind, this is the one, if I want that one, it's the only one. And yes, I could have a page from that issue, but that's not the same if I want the cover. And, and again, there's, you know, whatever, 18 pages or 20 pages in an issue, and that's great too. But again, the sort of the one of one, whereas we can all have a Captain Kerr, or at least, you know, 10 of us or 20, you know 15 of us could have a captain kirk if we wanted it and i'm not talking about prices but i am talking about i guess the hunt that's i don't know that's something supply. that jumps out yeah. to me yeah a little bit of supply well, yeah. but also what it is you specifically want i don't know that well, I, yeah. I would say that um you know ryan 
uh, intellectually, uh, I, I know what you're saying, and I believe you. I, I think part of it, too, is I, I have to believe what I believe as a way to handcuff myself to reality. That's fine. Because I remember... Um, Whatever you need to tell yourself. Exactly. Well, you know, we, we all do that. But I, I remember when I got into this hobby, it was actually mostly through Dave. Um, I was a toy collector slash dealer, and I met Dave that way. Oh, okay. And he was uh, very, very active in comic art collecting. And I, I'm a lifelong comic book reading, comic book collecting fan. Uh, but I was never into comic book art. And Dave would, I think this was the early days of Dave's collecting. He was still very passionate in, in, in preaching the good word. And when, he, when I finally got into it, my thought was, okay, I'm going to get like one representative piece from maybe my 10 favorite series and, and call it a day. And that was, you know, almost 20 years ago. And, and here I am. And, that was uh, 20 years ago and seven bankruptcies ago. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> There's a, you know, there's a danger of, of doing that again with, with movie props, by the way, I, I'm probably the worst guest because I'm, I'm trying to talk people away from collecting movie props with, you know, you guys are all about, uh, uh, building the collectors. No, and the well, no, we don't, we yeah. don't actually really care this what is, anybody this is just does. My own, no, but know, I think this is what's interesting psychosis. about what it's like for somebody who is an active collector in other fields to, Again, the the dipping of the toe. This is these are the thoughts that go through our heads. What if? What if I worry about this? I worry about that. Whatever. And let's go one step further. Going into your first purchases, which we I swear we're going to get to, you were also nervous about. I guess for lack of a better word, everything you didn't know. You were worried about what is this prop? Where does the authenticity yes, fit yes. in? And all of yes. those kinds of things. And, thank, what and are, thank you, thank you guys about you know for helping me with that. Chuck Costas too. So thank oh, yeah. publicly. Thank you guys. No, yeah. um, what I mean, Happy to. dig into that a little bit more if you don't mind. What was what were you what were, I mean, what were you worried about? What were you thinking about? Well, this wasn't yeah. an insignificant amount of money, and I'm a total novice. And I'd actually dip my toes into exploring um, movie prop collecting in the late 90s, early 2000s with one example, which we can talk about now or later. Yeah, what was the example? Go for it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was a big John Woo movie fan. Yes. And, uh, you know, revered John Woo, became friendly with him, got to meet Chow Yun Fat. And I thought, how cool would it be to own a pair of Berettas from his movies, M92, yeah. just like just like Die Hard? Yeah. Uh, you know, there was sort of the, uh, the uh, you know, gun du jour of the, those 80s action flicks. Yep. And, you know, he very famously does the double gun yeah. bit with the two Berettas. I, just total coincidence, I happened to meet John Woo's weapons master, through that same hobby, that toy collecting hobby. We were very much into one six scale figures, which were becoming very, very um, and sophisticated they were, at the time. And they were doing some really great one six scales well, of Chow know, Yun Fat, right? With well, the guns. well, this, this yeah. was this yeah. was the uh, this was my uh, replica phase, like Ryan, um, because these were very high end. They were hand sculpted and blah blah blah. And I met this guy uh, in Hong Kong who turned out to be John Woo's weapons master for those Hong Kong movies. And we became very friendly and we chat and I even went to Hong Kong. We'd, we'd hang out. Um, and he worked on all the movies and he had and he knew he was, you know, close relationship with the armor. So I said to him, this was um, late 90s, early 2000s. I said, hey, dude, is there any chance uh, he'd sell me one of those guns? And he told me. Probably not, just because how difficult they were to procure, even for the movies in Hong Kong. And um, he didn't think they let him go. Uh, but he did uh, offer to arrange a meeting at the, uh, you know, the office. And so I got to the office, and the guy brought out – he didn't bring out two, but he brought out a single Beretta. And this thing, I, I got to hold in my hand, and, you know, you, you – so I experienced everything you guys experienced when you hold Indy's whip and I imagine you put on his hat or whatever. So I'm holding Chai and Fat's gun in my hand. Um, which, uh, was, which, which movie was it from? Was it from one specific movie or it was, you don't know? It was, oh. it was the killer. It was, oh, wow. uh, you know, the better tomorrow movies. And you know, it's just, Oh, it's the same all, gun and all. Yeah. These. It's the same gun. Oh, wow. It's, it's the I same I gun. That, yeah. Um, you wow. know, there wasn't the That's idea of screen great. matching it then, but I had the weapons master who instantly identified it. Uh, and it was, beat to hell i mean it was wobbly it was shaky you know the slide you could rattle it um i i don't know how else to describe it but it was like a jalopy of a gun you know it was like a yeah. glorified paperweight 
Uh, but still, I had to have it. And so it was a very cordial meeting. And I did all the fanboy stuff, got my picture taken with it. And finally, before I left, I said, look, you know, um, zero expectation. Um, but I, I have to at least try, you know, can I make you an offer? And I made what, what was a very substantial offer. I had no idea what these things were worth, what movie props were worth. Um, but I didn't want to waste anyone's time. And this was like the most I'd ever spent on anything outside of a car. But I wanted to just, uh, and you, by the way, I think Dave knows from comic art collecting, um, I don't, I don't do the whole playing games and low balling. It's, I just give my best right, offer. You're not, you're not trying to offer like the, I'm waiting for the counter. You made an offer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like just let the chips fall where they may. And he, he thought about it and he ultimately declined. And for the, for the very reason that, um, as the weapons master said, it, these things are just hard to get. And that's why this thing was so beat up. It couldn't even be replaced. Uh, so that was my early foray into potential movie prop collecting. And I, I didn't even know that, you know, uh, listening to your show that, um, you know, there's licenses that need to be, you know. Uh, yeah, I was thinking, as you were telling the story, I was thinking, like, how the fuck are you going to get that thing? Get I, I thought yeah. I was just going to send, Kong, it, yeah. Yeah, send it back in FedEx or something. I really had no plan at all. I was just okay. excited to go to see yeah. the guy and hold the gun, you know, I because I really was that clueless. I mean, I, you know, did I think I could just bring it back in my luggage? I honestly don't remember, but I didn't even think that far ahead. You go to a toy store and you buy one of those great Japanese yeah, yeah, the models. Gun. Yeah, 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 the airsoft yeah. gun. And yeah. you take out the airsoft gun, you put the real gun in, you package it in up, and you mail it to yourself. All I'm right, sure so, that, so, I'm sure that so works. Yeah. To tie into the story, sure that, works, that, yeah. that weapons master is the guy who created the airsoft uh, pulse rifle kit. Back. He, he was a, he was oh, part of that, wow. that gang, yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, you know, it's, it all, all kind of ties together. Yeah. That is excellent. That's, uh, that's too bad answer. you didn't I mean, get that's, it. But that's, that's really, really cool. cool. Yeah. And too bad. Yeah. Too yeah. bad. Although you have I those think pictures still. You might you know, still you be waiting me, for I, it to come I, into I, LA. I, I have one specific picture. I remember where I'm holding the gun like that, and I just can't find it. I just can't. Oh, you, you know, got to find this it. This is this is pre digital, right? It was just you got to just at when we get done with this recording, just begin yeah. searching your entire house for that. We must put that up on the website. Yeah, yeah please, yeah. Uh, please find that picture. Yeah. Um, Shout out to Simon if he's out there. I haven't talked to him in you know, twenty years, but anyway, it was a good time. It was a good time. Oh, is that what Simon was... Lee? No, no. No. Okay. Okay. No. Yeah. Yeah, he's a he's a British guy, another weapons master. But I oh. I figured not. But there's a British guy who's, who's also a collector or was a collector. Yeah. Yeah. That a lot is a great, lot is, of great, a lot of great John Woo, Chow Yun Fat stories. It was, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Where is Chow Yun Fat? Yeah, where, yeah. Uh, he's, he's all over. I mean, he's, he's still making movies in China. Is he? okay. he's, he's in Hong Kong and he looks great. He's running like marathons. He's hmm. in fantastic, fantastic shape. Hmm. Um, I'll tell you a funny story. We, uh, he came out to San Francisco. It was some Asian American, uh, celebration shindig where he was going to receive an award. And I was in my mid twenties with my girlfriend, who became my wife. And uh, the t those tickets weren't cheap, but you know we were we had to meet him. Right. So we got him. We went to the reception, and he saw. He took pictures with us. Had a quick chat. And uh, my girlfriend was going to Cal at the time. You know, it was just it was very nice. I mean, he was just very uh, personable, and he's a very salt of the earth, man of the people, down to earth, all all that. Flash forward like another year or two, and you know we were just obsessed fans. So they had a film festival for him. Uh, retrospective in Boston at Boston Museum of Fine Art. And again, they had a little reception for him, which I talked my way into. And uh, we walk in the door. He sees us and he says to me, hey, how's Berkeley? <laughs> That's pretty good. He's the Schwarzenegger of, uh, That's of really China, good. of Hong Kong. That's really good. Yeah. Very, uh, very Arnold-esque. Um, that is pretty, pretty excellent. Are you new to collecting props? Where can you go to learn about the hobby aside from this fine podcast? Use Prop Store's resources to help you increase your knowledge of the hobby. Collecting props is different from other hobbies, and Prop Store has a number of resources that can help you do your research. That's actually very well done. They, I think Chuck really was trying to aim for the, you know, Felix bought a new, bought, Felix is a first-time prop uh, buyer. Yeah. And this is aimed at the first-time prop buyer. Good on you, Prop Store. Prop Store's auctions. Reading through Prop Store's catalog is a history lesson and education on the hobby. You can access the results of each individual Prop Store auction online at PropStore.com and also find past copies of printed catalogs to purchase on Prop Store's Buy Now platform. And probably some free PDFs, but they, maybe they don't want you to know that. But anyway, mm. so yes, all of what they just said. 
You can also go to the Prop Store auction archives, which is uh, the sold archives on PropStore.com to run searches against Prop Store's history of sales across buy now and auctions to see what has been sold in the past and how prices have changed for the worst over time. It is an invaluable free resource <laughs> for you to use. Prices have just gone down and down and down. It's now a buyer's market, down. everybody. Yeah. It's just free. They're practically giving it away. Uh, Prop Store's videos. Subscribe to Prop Store's emails and social channels to watch new videos every week, giving you insight on pieces that are coming up for sale. You can also find older videos on Prop Store's YouTube channel. And Prop Store has done a number of videos with other partners, such as Tested and the stuff that dreams are made of and the stuff that dreams are made of which are also available on YouTube. <laughs> Prop Store's staff regularly make themselves available to talk about your want list. They answer your questions, give new collectors their perspective on the hobby. If you ever have a question about an item you're interested in buying, you can reach out to Prop Store at support at PropStore.com. Prop Store's Buy Now platform. Prop Store's Buy Now platform is a great place to get started to buy your first prop. There are over 5,000 items for immediate purchase at fair prices, and only, I think, like 4,000 of them are for are my, my th things I found in my closet um, that are just there. Which will ironically <laughs> yeah. be bought using the Ryan 10 discount code. Yes, use your Dave 10 or Ryan 10 discount or Dave 10 upon checkout or Tested 10 upon checkout to get 10% off your entire purchase and vote for your favorite host at the same time. For new and experienced prop collectors, Prop Store has been the trusted place to learn about the hobby for over 25 years. So head over Jesus, to PropStore.com. years? I'm old. Yeah. Jesus, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, uh, head over to PropStore.com and find out how old you are and check out all the resources available to you right now. Now. Okay. So you're, you, you almost do that all those years ago. You're holding off. You're not. You listen to a couple of episodes of our show. Then you turn the show off. You, you, you punish yourself like a penitent christian of some sort mm -hmm. to not take advantage of the with a screen used whip the, yeah with the yeah. beautiful beautiful <laughs> sounds of our dulcet tones because you're so worried about this thing yes and then what pops up in the you start to look you're looking at these catalogs right you're getting nope, prop store nope, catalogs no you're nope, not even looking nope, at the catalogs nope nope okay so then what I happens was, I, what so, happens then? so Tell us the my, story. my my daughter yeah. is going to school in la now she just started in the fall. So I, I make frequent trips to, to see her. And I, I, I prefer to drive. I just, I like to drive. And it was on one of these drives. I, I got that desperate. I ran out of things to listen to. <laughs> I said, uh, Desperation. Uh, I, yeah. I said, totally acceptable way into the stuff dreams are made I, of. And, um, you know, I had subscribed to you guys. I just never listened. And you're, you're on my list. So you have like 80 episodes piled up. Perfect. I said, oh, what the hell? Good for a drive. Good for a drive. What the hell? Okay. What the hell? And then, uh, so I, I popped one on and by the time I got home, I think I was calling Dave, was, Dave, tell me more, you know, tell me well, more. And, uh, and we're going to, we can now talk about your first purchase. What, so you were hearing about the auk, you were hearing about, I think that was a, it was a prop store auction, right? Correct. The, correct. Yeah. correct. And what, what, cause you're a huge fan of the film, I know, but tell the others what, what hit you? What, what did you hear about that? You were just instantly like, what do I, I'm, I'm interested. Well, it was the specific movie, which I guess I'll show when I open up this yeah. box. But honestly, it probably could have been about anything. Gotcha. I mean, okay. I, I, I was just uh, fascinated. Um, and it, it, uh, it activated that part of the brain. It had nothing to do with comic art being too expensive or hard to get or whatever. It's just in that moment, you got me. So should we open the box or should we talk about what it is in the box for what's what's better? I don't even know. We've never, probably, we've never. Oh, should we open? I've ne we've never done an unboxing. Always open. Yeah, always okay. open. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, yeah. I guess show then good. tell, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. This is the unboxing of Felix Liu so of Felix to Comic this, Art. Uh, I have to keep this this yeah. uh, place, this mic on. Try right? so and bring it up so we can see it yeah. as you unbox such as it is. This is our first. Uh, How disappointed are you going to be, Dave, if this is an X-Wing? It'd be kind of funny though. How disappointed am I going to be if, if this is if what Felix, I paid for? Felix is the one that outbid me <laughs> yeah. on the pyro that caused all yeah. the trouble. Yeah, yeah. Very but good. Uh, so you you can this see is, this the, the size yeah. oh. of this box. It's uh, it's That's very it's, good. It's, yeah. Can and you I give us a hint? What's on the shipping label? Is it? Uh, let's start with this. Was it UK or was it uh, LA auction? I can't remember. This was UK. This UK this came okay. from UK. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Very exciting. Very exciting. Yeah, yeah. My viewers will remember this. Felix, Felix does thing. a lot of unboxing of comic art and then oh, uh, very cool. Yeah. Smaller we're packages. Gonna, uh, yeah. So either they're they're gonna send me the wrong thing or I'm gonna drop this as soon as I 
it'd take be it really funny possible. if it is like just yeah. like, you open it up and it's uh the umbrella from the untouchables <laughs> you know because it's not the guns right not the booze there whatever yeah there you go come on there's something there right? yeah there you go and then so this, <laughs> we can you can you, we can uh we can grade prop stores packaging too they're pretty good. They I didn't will know, say they, they are, didn't know what they, they were are, getting into when they yeah. sent me this. They are obsessively good. I, I could already tell from the way. peanuts that it was prop store. It uh holy it's crap. funny. I can't stand peanuts and this is a box full no, of peanuts. No, this is good. Yeah, this is going to be all yeah. over your house, but that's okay. Yeah, I um suck it. No, to their credit on the packaging, what I was going to say was uh this is very exciting. I've never understood why people watch these unboxing things, but now even I know what's in it, and I'm kind of excited, which is sort yeah, of, yeah, sort yeah. Of there's interesting. a there's yeah. a real uh, sort of Ark of the Covenant thing going on here. But there, it, there's a box within a box, which I like. Ah, yeah, which box I, and I box. do like. Box and yeah. box is the box uh, box. Is I was, the way to go. I was kind of thinking that uh, I wasn't. I honestly wasn't expecting much from the packaging. Just from the, the, the outside box is kind of flimsy. Look at the shape, though. Now there's a shape. I do. I do like the size of this. This is yeah. uh, this is speaking oh. to <laughs> the things that interest at least one collector on this podcast. <laughs> it's a sword. Felix has unmiked himself <laughs> as well in the unboxing. A little, a little awkward. A little awkward. Okay. Um, let's Box see. Dave. Two. Dave, you know. You know. I know I'm not what saying a word. Is. I'm not saying does, a word. Does yeah. Ryan know? He I, maybe remembers cuz we asked I you do asked because questions I was about consulted it. Yeah. on okay. it. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. That's that's right. That's right you were. <laughs> but I didn't know how good your uh, your memory is. My mind is horrible. I would have forgotten. Uh, my memory is terrible for everything but for movie props. I can I can remember. <laughs> I can remember. Yeah, I was uh, actually going to say, you know, you guys were talking about information about band- this. Yeah. You guys were talking about bandwidth, and I think the honest answer is is my bandwidth only works partially because of the both of you, meaning I have Ryan to talk to about like what's going on in prop stuff because like there are just things that go past me, whatever. And then Felix, I have you to talk about with comic art. So I'm at like 50% on both and you guys help me sort of make it up a little yeah. bit. So yeah. kudos. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. But we can't not, remember not, your not, children's not, not, not teachers all, names but... for you, Dave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all right. I know, I, know I have a boy and a girl. More, Does that more, help? More, yeah. more peanuts. <laughs> More freaking peanuts. All right, but I don't think there's going to be another box in the box, but I do believe there's okay. going to be some bubble wrap. There, there is, is bubble is. wrap. Good call. Yeah. <laughs> there is bubble wrap. God, I'm making such a mess here. That's going to be the next week's show, which is just you cleaning. Right, am I going to drop this? <laughs> yeah. This should be the vacuum. Yeah. There's, just, there's bzz, just, a, <laughs> just a slow video of Felix vacuuming. <laughs> just single stage light on him. <laughs> and then cut to like 10 million hits on YouTube, which is like, wait, yeah. it's just a, yeah. just a guy vacuuming. Yeah. Well, people, ASMR, people their, right? People have their own sexual sure peccadilloes. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so we have oh. a sm- oh, smallish a package. Box. Okay. And now then, I'm confused. Uh, yeah. Something bigger in bubble wrap. Yes. That's and the one I know about. Wait, which which you should buy- we open? Did you buy two things or one thing? I did. I bought two oh. things. Oh, then buy, oh. open the little one because that's actually a surprise for us. I don't think I yeah, remember. Yeah, I don't know what that yeah, is. Right. I think I might know, but I don't didn't know you won it. So that's the, that's, the little yeah. box. Will, will I'm spoiler yeah. is going to give a no, no. This is exciting box. This is super exciting. No, no. I know what you mean, but it's okay. I, think I it's, would just they, like they to last. remind the yeah. uh, the prop store people if they are listening that this 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 purchase was made possible by the stuff dreams are made of. You're welcome. And uh, to make it up to you, Ryan, for you know, out of pity for you never having been to Skywalker, uh, Ryan 10. Ryan 10, everyone. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I was about to say, on the action code. purchased at Prop Store by Felix during a season fully sponsored by Heritage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> last year, during last season, yes. fully sponsored. All right, I'm going to open this okay, up. Here it is. Any, any, any guesses? Any guesses? Oh, no. I wow, think okay. I know, but I mean, you want to go, Ryan? No, I'm, I'm, I'm clueless. I imagine from the same movie. Good guess. Yeah. Good guess. Can you remember? There was a little look familiar. Yeah. Nice. Fantastic. Yeah. Great pickup. That is. Yeah. Fantastic. This is. Uh, so these are the uh, the the uh, Colonial Marine, uh, Marine grenades. The M40 grenade. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. I think this is the one that uh, Jeanette Goldstein uh, 
Oh, that she used. Yeah, did yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Ryan, did you look? You almost, I, I don't you know almost, that it is, but I'm going to say yes. Oh. Yeah. Ryan, did you almost bid on that lot? Were you thinking about it no, for your costume? I, um, no. I, 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 look, I looked some? at them and I had a panic attack because I've been trying to, you can see Hudson behind me. And I've been trying to fill him out, but actually Hudson doesn't wear any grenades on him. So oh, so you were it's, safe. It's, yeah. uh, I, was, I was preserved. Uh, I, when I had my Hicks, I had to find a couple of those because Hicks has like, yeah. There's a couple missing because he's used right. them. Right. Yeah, he doesn't he, have all but, of them. So that's they, what, they, yeah, I, that's what I actually. My pitch for this lot was that two collectors should go in because usually you see like two right, of them. Nobody on each has and them all except all maybe four. at the very beginning of the film. And, right. And what's what's funny is um, Chuck actually suggested that, but I feel like it it, it feels off. I I got all four together. I just I feel like I think it's different with when you when you are buying that prop unto itself meaning yeah, when you correct. display that as unto itself these are the grenades i think you want them all if later on you decide to do a costume you could sell a couple off so yes yeah i think something to think about so no i did not go into that go in and on a lot with and those, and those are all heroes right felix those actually the the cap comes off and the little buttons there to, uh, to, to press i i don't yeah. know they're heavy though they're yeah. kind of they got a good yeah weight. well they're they're, they're really the nice write-up. they're like yeah turn, they're the turned it's, uh, been a while. it's it's yeah. it's it's you know machined i don't yeah. know if it's aluminum or you know something all else, right so but... uh if we were doing this live i know the audience would be chiming in i know what that is i know what that is and you'd be right you'd be right because uh it's wonder boy from the natural right <laughs> <laughs> one I'm just go, thinking one... of long things because one this of these is things where, does this, go this the is other. where ryan and i you know, we converge because like Ryan, I mean, all of basically my my dream collection is is Ryan's because we like the exact same movies. Although I don't know how it that worked out for Ryan because he's a kid. He's a baby. I'm actually the right age. VHS, man. Yeah, yeah VHS. I was a VHS kid. So I found I, all the I, good stuff. I saw all these in the theater. And this was the first one that uh, I started to see. That, that summer that I could drive, so I saw it like every freaking weekend. I drove, like, dragged yeah. all my friends to it, family to it, didn't matter. I th- this movie I saw more than any other in the theater. I can't say I saw it more than any other in the theater, but I definitely saw it like three times in the theater. Yeah, I just yeah. I was uh, it was such an experience. I remember seeing this in the theater. You know, it had gotten a good review, and I wanted to see it, uh, but I was it was such an e-ticket ride. You know, again. Had you myself. seen Alien in the theater or otherwise? I did not see Alien. I did not see Alien you in the theater. As a matter of fact, I didn't see Alien until after Aliens, and I, I found it kind of underwhelming. This is honestly, I, oh my god, I, I'm this is quite moving. Um, wow, this is something. I'm going to hold it up. This is the emotional connection to the right. This is. This is. Look at that. Ah, wow. Look at that. That is, is gorgeous. Uh, it is. It is the pulse rifle, and this is. Aim it so at us. Is, aim, go, go, uh, go, f- yeah. Go John yes. on you. Yeah. 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 Show me everything. Whoops. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, you got that, Dave? A, this has a much nicer weight to it than I was expecting because yeah. they described it as, you know, some sort of polyurethane foam or something. And I yeah, didn't know what it's to expect. Called, uh, it's called biscuit foam, which, which makes you okay. think that it's foamy, but it's actually, yeah. it's, but the, it's, it's, it's a hard it's, cast. It's, it's, hard, it's more, it, more resiny. Chunky. Yeah. 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 I mean, it makes you realize obviously how heavy it would be were it actually metal, but it doesn't, yeah. it's not like you're holding something made of balsa wood. It doesn't, it's not, yeah. it, it yeah. doesn't, I'm, it's not loosey goosey. It's, it, there's a solidity to oh, it. Oh, and, and here's lovely. the, yeah. uh, here's the duct tape uh, residue from when Ripley, I guess, wraps the, point yeah. that which is very nice not all yeah, of those have it up. obviously yeah. and that's that's i'm, a, I'm kidding i'm kidding yeah. i'm, oh. I'm oh. kidding oh. No, you know what i there, I, there I, are I, those that do out there so i uh people who live in la now post pandemic i don't know what happened it is moviegoers paradise there are about 25 venues that'll play old movies on the big screen projected you know film and uh american cinematech in november this is right after i'd won this thing um, screened a 70 millimeter print of Aliens, which they had, which the studio hadn't loaned out in like 15 years, and they had two screenings. I went to them both, and it's funny, I never really looked before, and this is sort of the the sickness. Like once you have movie props in your brain, yeah. now I'm identifying. I'm, I, it's like, I just want to enjoy the movie, but you know, I, I saw where they were using the yeah, stunt. You could, stunt, you could, yeah. you could see where they're using the stunt. Um, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I listened to the podcast, and it, and. Um, you guys talked about aliens. There was, there was a lot of alien stuff. Obviously, it wasn't that great Harry Harrison collection from a yeah. year or two ago. And 
maybe, you know, good for, thank God for me. But uh, I instantly identified this piece as one I wanted to go after. It feels like a, a one and done, you know, sh- this is the stunt, you know, short of the hero. And this hey, feels you know, like a one and done says the guy that just bought two props from the same movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In this, in, in one and done in this sense, um, in a perfect world, of course, we'd all prefer to have the the hero. Uh, but the heroes for this movie are, you know, they have issues. They're a little problematic. And, you know, I, I wonder just as a thought exercise, would I want one hero or what would be better in a collection? What would I have more fun with? A, a hero or a stunt plus the, you know, accessories and accoutrements and uh, whatever else. And, um, the I didn't have a choice because there was no hero available, but this feels yeah. like a, a, like a, I don't like know. A, the stunt, I don't know, does not in the least, I don't know what to say for me. It doesn't bother me in the least. No. There's something to be said for something that just looks and feels the way you want it to look and feel. I mean, it really, you instantly identifiable, just, I don't know, just kind of perfect. Congratulations. Let me, let me start with I, that. I, yeah. Honestly, yeah, I, well I, I can't, Welcome I can't even, it. I can't, I can't even put this down. I'm, I'm going to sniff it, I, you know, <laughs> cradling well, it. I, first of all, I will say, by the way, thank you and kudos for having this package for so long and not opening it and waiting because obviously yeah, – you, you know, yeah. I, I can't honestly say it was just discipline because honestly – and you know, Dave, you have the same pile of packages. I just have no time to – open these up and i know quite, that's oh, a oh. that's a tough one to not yeah. uh yeah, yeah. You know, every, yeah i mean that's a tough one uh but now that you have it i, I mean joy let's start yes, with that yes i'm 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 ecstatic i i, I am and um yeah like i like like i say well even with you know like with comic art it's 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 not cheap but you know when you have it in your hands you don't even think about that anymore you know? right Right. No, the price, I mean, that's the, the most wonderful thing in the world with the right purchase is the price disappears. And I mean that whether it's really cheap, the right price, or really expensive. Like, even if you got it for a nickel, you're not thinking about, I can't believe I paid a nickel anymore. Even if it was the world's greatest bargain, it's not about the bargain anymore. It's about, I have this thing, I'm holding it. Like, somebody in the movie held this, and now I'm holding it. Yeah. So I, uh, I, I listened to the podcast, I called Dave. And that week, I'm I'm scheduled to take a trip to Japan. I'm going to Tokyo with a bunch of artists and friends just to hang out and have fun. Um, the auction happens the night I land in Tokyo, <laughs> so leading up to that, I only had a, a few days. You know, I'm 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 calling Dave frantically, who then uh, helps me with you know getting some intel from Ryan. Yeah, I think um, Ryan. I, I think Felix was asking if, if memory serves. He wanted some of the numbers in terms of yeah. how many of these things are yeah, out population, there, population, right? And yeah. then also a little bit of a sense of like what they had been selling for, just to give him sort of a kind of a, a base point, if I remember yeah. correctly. That's what you were Correct. asking. Yeah, I mean, right. I, look, I I bought mine um, seven years ago, probably six years ago, maybe. Um, and I would say, you know, with, you know, within spitting distance of the price that you paid. So I think that's just been the guy there. Are, others have gotten cheaper since then. Um, and my guess is there's probably, you know, 10, 10 to 12 of those, that version, uh, yeah, out there. You know, and, um, not that it really matters with these things. I mean, it does, definitely doesn't matter with art. As Dave said, it's just one of a kind, but these things are so limited that condition, you know, you can live with like that, that, that M- the Beretta that's fallen apart, I would have taken it. But I do like that this one's actually from the ones I've seen, and um, you know, this one's actually really clean. It's actually pretty nice. I mean, you can tell it's been used. It's it's not pristine, but overall, at least it's not completely wrecked. You know, so but but wrecked, I would still be happy. Let's, yeah, I mean, most it's of them are most great, of them yeah. are in, in in pretty good shape for whatever it's worth. Our thinking is that a lot of these were actually used to dress into the armory scene when you see them all racked into the into the yes, wall, and yes, they just yes, they yes. just kind of speed cast a bunch of them, painted them very quickly. Felix, you know, there's a little detail which is also on mine. If you if you hold it up, the uh, the front of the receiver, uh, so where the bolt is for the you know for the Thompson. So if you just hold it the way you've been holding it. Um, mm. Uh, so you see right, right where your finger is. So where the, where the, where the, where the, the bolt is for the, the slide, uh, right above the counter, you see mm-hmm. how that's green. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's like half green and half black. Mm -hmm. it really should all be it should all be black and like mm. sort of like half of them are that way and half of them okay. are all black because somebody okay. was just quickly doing it in the Spray art department. Painting as quick and, as like, they well, human. Well, the, yeah. There's no uh, hole in the barrel. It's just yep. it's just chopped off. And yeah. I actually, again, I, I never would have noticed this before. I just saw a uh, a publicity photo of Sigourney, you know, in her in her sort of final countdown outfit, yep. holding the gun out, and it's, it's, she's holding a stunt because it's that way on the yeah. poster, Felix. Yeah. Yeah. Well, by the way, and speaking... actually, the, the 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 there was a there was a casting issue, and the reason it has that weird sort of triangular chunk on the end of the barrel is because that mm. piece of the rifle must have slid forward in the mold, so it mm. got kind of hollow, solid cast that way. Because if you look got at the it. heroes, it's all pushed back and flush against the, uh, you know, against against the piece. I was going to say, speaking of uh, the poster, and I guess sort of the poster, uh, Felix, you have a, a bunch of wonderful. Started. Oh, sure. You, you're welcome to hold it for the rest of the entire podcast and all for right, the next right. 10 years. Um, <laughs> um, I was going to say, uh, I, in your comic art world, obviously, you have a wonderful collection. I know you've had a lot of different great artists commission you aliens pieces that are in your right. collection, which right. are wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and people can make uh, some of that up oh, on cool. uh, Comic Art Fans at all. Yeah, yeah. a bunch yeah. of it is up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you go to ComicArtFans.com and check out Felix Liu's uh, uh, Little, Send some of those whatever. to us, Felix, because we'd love to post yeah. them on our feed when we're talking about using. They're really nice. Okay. But what I wanted to talk about was you have a pretty incredible piece in your collection, which is the airbrushed. How? How? I mean, I don't even know how what to call it. It's sort of the airbrushed photo art of Sigourney for the poster. Is that? Uh, am I just? Am correct. I saying correct. this correct? Right. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is so definitely. You know, in that world of, to me, it's very prop adjacent. It's movie art collecting. It's whatever. I love it. But tell us about that piece, and we'll show that piece as well, because that really, in in my mind, that is the that is the lead in to this piece, which is how much you love aliens. You've had that thing for a while, and to me, when this is hanging next to that, that's really where it's going to all come together. But tell yes. us about that piece. Yeah. Um just totally lucked into that piece. There was a, a creative director named Mike Salisbury. I don't know if that name sounds familiar to you, but this guy has had quite the career. I mean, he was involved in everything. He was, he was Forrest Gump. He was Zelig, you know, the, the Raiders sure. of the Lost Dark font you know, he designed. So long story short, oh, wow. he was working for 20th Century Fox doing the ad campaign. And um, they so created he was an internal that, he, internal guy, or he was with an agency that that they worked. His, with? His, you know what? I don't know what the relationship with that time, but I believe I'll it was his own probably agency. A little bit of both, is my yeah. guess would be. He probably, I mean, those guys like probably started somewhere and then you know had his own. I don't know that's just yeah. A guess. So this was yeah. uh, so he was tasked with, with creating the final poster art, which was a uh, you know Ripley with Newt in her arms. She's got the the pulse rifle and the eggs around her. Uh, right. which ultimately did not get used for the American one sheet because I think uh, Cameron or someone thought it gave too much away. But it has been – it was used internationally and is sort of the, you know, the indelible, iconic image. Yeah, for the I feel movie like now. it's become – like almost like once the movie was out almost it became, yeah. I guess. Yeah. To it's me, it's on, what on I the, think on the of. Home, yeah. On the home media or whatever. So yeah. It's still – you know, you, 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 you recognize it. And the way they put that together was in the pre-Photoshop days. They, they took all the elements and kind of pasted it together. Um, uh, as a composite and took a photo of that they then printed the photo and had an artist add all the airbrush embellishments directly on the photo and you know the illuminated eye in aliens that's painted mm. directly on the poster that's wonderful oh, yeah. i love that yeah that's yeah. really really cool that's a gorgeous piece that is that's a really cool. gorgeous gorgeous piece and, and you I got that like... right from that creative director from from having yes, a yes. relationship uh, with him? he he not so he was having someone help him sell his you know archives and i just happened to luck into that you know that was uh, there that was available and i, I jumped find. all over really, it really yeah. really cool yeah i'd love to would see you a photo of that would you say in your cuz that's in your gallery as well would you say yes. that's the piece you most get asked about selling or is that up there well, it's 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 funny i i can i'll tell you this story and you guys can Take it. I mean, you guys do a lot of editing on your podcast. I'm going to try and be or not uh, or not be as discreet uh, as you need to be. Yeah, yes, yeah, circumspect here. Um, I, I I have been asked for that. I mean, I don't really get pinged on my art a lot because I think people understand I, I'm not a guy who sells. Um, I mean, it's not, I I refuse, but I just I very rarely sell. So right. I think people just kind of give up. On this piece, it was actually a movie prop collector who reached out. 
And uh, I'm just going to throw these numbers out again, you know, trim it, whatever. I don't care. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just telling you guys, yeah. like we're, we're sitting yeah. around having a beer. That's trading the show. stories. Go for it. That's the um, show. And he, he offered me $12,000 for it, which uh, felt low, but didn't matter. I mean, I just, I just wasn't selling. So thank him, politely decline and, uh, and move on about a year or two later, uh, he writes me again, and uh, so so when he offered me twelve, I, I didn't know what these things were going for, right? But I look online. I think uh, some semi comps would be like Halloween post, you know, original art, uh, RoboCop, it's, which it's so you know hard. It's, because it's, because hard. it's hard. It's hard. Not, it's not just the what it is. It's what it is from Alien. I mean, right, I don't know. Right. It's very so, hard. So he asked me, so yeah. what do I think it's worth? I, said, I don't know what it's worth, but I think it's worth at least what those things are in, on an open market. But that's all academic because I'm not I'm not selling. You know, thank you. Yeah. Um, the Robo so that, that Robocop poster that went, that's a good analog for it, I feel. Yeah, I guess because Robocop yeah. is, a, is a similar, I would like yeah. that. And it's the that. same yes, era. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Sim- similar similar kind of painting as well it wasn't it's not a pure piece of art it's sort of halfway in between photo and hand done and all that yeah so uh about you know a year or two later he writes me and uh he, he makes me another offer like un- unsolicited just which i get you know i, I do that too uh he goes i'd like to offer you seventy thousand dollars what do you think and i said well i think i'm glad i didn't sell it for 12 yeah, yeah. same guy <laughs> same guy wow Wow, I believe there a friend of some... yours. I, I believe a friend of yours. Oh, if you really? think for yeah. four seconds, Ryan, you'll know who it is. Yeah, <laughs> without sure. Yeah, the guy who has the Robocop poster. <laughs> um, but uh, I was going to say there, there actually is a bunch of new money that's come to the prop town recently, and and there are at least two people who are aliens, alien not crazy, yeah. who have who have put in like insane bids on things, and it's just like I'm glad I have my aliens collection because I, I was going to say well, though, you know, I, I'm glad I had the, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I know you're going to say is I was just going to say is the difference is though is there at this point they either have their stunt but or they've moved. For sure. Past, yeah, I mean that's yeah. they they are definitely looking for the things they don't have. Yeah, I know one of them yeah. has one of the heroes because he he shook it out of the tree of one of our our collector friends uh, here in the U.S. Dave, uh, yeah. who had one of, one of the cool heroes. It's got it's gone because they came in and offered crazy money for it. But, well, I, I, in that prop store auction, there were a few things I identified. This was, you know, top of the list. And then uh, the other things were more of a, you know, amorphous blob. They were all the accessories. Um, I really liked um, Ripley's lighter, uh, but yep. it's, you know, it's, it's tiny. Um, I liked uh, I liked Hicks' knife just because it's a knife. Yeah. But that was a much lower priority because I don't even remember seeing it on his, you know, it's his, more of a uh, costume own... accessory than an yeah. actual prop. Yes. Right. Right. The... Now, if it was if it was uh, your guy's knife. You yeah. know, uh, I, I'd been, I, I would have been very, very excited by that. Exactly. It's right there. Like I said, you have, you have, you have my, my dream collection, you know, between, between aliens and, right and raiders. Yeah. 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 Um, that would have been obviously much more interesting. Uh, but the, I'm, one, I'm, the one that you looked at for a second or two, and I don't know where it fell into your personal listings, but I thought was interesting was the, uh, the little, uh, forgive the workshop me. sign, the, the workshop, the, oh, the, the I, I like that the uh, aliens workshop the that, the modelers. I, yeah, I was thinking was about the Hadley. The, the Hadley's uh, hope. The Hadley's, Hadley's hope. Hadley's population one hundred and fifty-four. Mini sign. Yeah. yeah. Was it a mini sign? I thought it was like giant. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought it was like this big. No, yeah. it, was a, it was a model miniature sign. Yeah. Oh, okay. I believe. Right. Yeah. I mean, that was my reading of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was that was definitely interesting, but lower. I like. I, I think you guys call these hand props. You know, I like yeah. these more than models sure so yeah yeah sure yeah Yeah, i I was gonna ask did you look at the apc at all but but that that sort of answers that question right right but also a much bigger price tag though yes yes Yes. that was that was a that's a non-star tougher first prop um so okay so now not to not to put too fine a point on it and obviously you don't have to guarantee anything so now you've got your first really two props in hand where is your brain at this moment in terms of you're good on aliens. Are there other movies that like you'll sort of poke around? Are you getting catalogs? Where do you fit? Where are you? Where is your brain right now as well, we this, move this, forward? This, yeah. this auction was in November. There have been at least a couple auctions since 
that I didn't even pay attention to because but I, I kind of. But nothing giant. We're about to, and we don't know when this one's airing, but coming up at the basically, what is it, end of February, early March, or mid March? Is that end when of, everything uh, is? Mid to end of March. Mid to end of March. There are two huge auctions there's the 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 uh planet hollywood and another uh, prop store auction and then followed by the greg gene number two auction so there are two and a, two three big auctions coming up you've missed little things but there are some biggies coming all right let's start with are you going to look at the catalogs or are you going to where do you fall I, I i think the fact that it took me this long to open up this package uh sort of reflects my mindset which is I'm trying not to think about but these things. But now you're going to have this great, you know, pulse rifle that you're going to be staring at. It's no longer a box. It may be yeah. worse. Yeah. Yeah. So it's no longer an idea. It's, well, um, okay. So uh, this is where I'm alternate universe Ryan again, where, you know, we're, we're not Dave. If I'm going to start building a proper movie prop collection, it's, it's going to come out of my comic art, meaning – I have to sacrifice from my comic art. I have to uh, take away from my com – I wouldn't have the comic art collection I have if I'm going to get into movie props. And I don't want to yeah. make that sacrifice, you know? Yeah. Um, With uh, that I'm, in I'm, mind, what's yeah. on your list? What's on your list? <laughs> like if you, decided, if you decided to make a sacrifice, what are the movies, whether it's specific props or just like – the movies that mean something to you that would do something like let's say tomorrow i'm making this up let's say all of a sudden in this planet hollywood auction it's not in there i don't believe I, i've looked through once but let's say tomorrow in whatever auction uh I, that chow yun fat gun showed itself what where, where's your brain i was about to say that but yeah <laughs> i i uh, uh you know I don't know. I can't say for sure. Look, I'm not going to say I absolutely no, of course will not. have yeah. no interest. But at this point, I'm not ready to say, yeah, I'm going to go all in either. Yeah. What are your other favorite movies that you'll be on the lookout for in theory? Like, what are the movies that you yeah. think well, about? This, yeah. this, this, this movies also and make, props together. Where do you, what are you thinking? This also makes uh, my foray into props uh, easy uh, because – the movies I like are Indiana Jones, you know, and very specifically Raiders of the Lost Ark. I saw Temple of Doom once. Uh, that's how much I disliked it. Really? Um, and and, and Re Return of the Jedi, yuck. I, I don't, I, I can't, I, I, you know, I love Road Warrior movies, but Beyond Thunderdome, no, no good. No good. They're, they're all, you know, Sting 2 to me. Um, so, like, the, I like Dave that. Likes whip the, they, the whip they had in. Can I tell uh, you something really quickly? Sorry, I have to interrupt. Yeah. Um, yeah. I showed my son uh, Road Warrior. That's the, we watched Road Warrior. Um, oh wow! Which he loved, and oh, okay. I've been and I want to take him. Has he seen Fury Road? No, he. Wa I, I had said to him at some point or another, I want you to see it on a big screen. And okay. now there's no big screen coming up about it for it. There's nothing like on the schedule, and I'm like, let's just watch it. We'll watch it on our big TV. It'll be kind of okay. And he's just like. No, I want to see it on a big screen. And also, he refuses to watch the third one. He's like, I, I don't think it looks good, and I don't want to watch it and ruin it. And yeah, it's just, okay. and I'm just like, okay, all right, fair enough. Yeah. Sorry. Continue. <laughs> Smart kid. Smart kid. Uh, so there's, yeah, I, there's I, a whip coming up, Felix. It's a, it's it's allegedly a Temple of Doom whip, but it's it's very I, I, it's a cool whip with well, the nice last one was a, provenance. Yeah. The the last whip was a you know Temple of Doom and later. Yeah. And um, I, as much as I would love a whip, you know, I, I, look, if the price is right in the sense that I, could, I, you know, I could easily afford it, Temple of Doom, Crystal Skull, I don't care. You know, I'll probably take it. But um, given where these things are going, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to draw that line. Yeah. But those, those are the movies I like. Like, you know, I'm an 80s kid. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure there's any prop post- 1989 that i really any movie that i care about that much quite honestly Me neither. <laughs> yeah is aliens your all-time favorite from that period like just not prop wise just movie wise is that your all-time favorite would you say or hard to hard it's to up there delineate? it's definitely yeah. it's definitely up there i mean a lot of these movies they age uh they you know they become dated um but that is when i know you've you've mentioned you believe uh wrath of khan is like the perfect screenplay and i i also i mean i'm just that's i'm not a trekkie at all i like the movies and two above any of the others and two not just for a trek film but just any movie 
Yeah, huge fan. It's a standalone movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's that's how I feel about Aliens, and it's it still holds up. I took my kid to see it um, at the American Cinematheque, and she'd she'd seen it before, but in an audience on a big screen, even she had to say, "Yeah, that was awesome." Yeah, cool. That's excellent. That is excellent. Um, all righty. Anything else, Ryan, on your mind? No, I mean this has been uh, it's been fantastic uh, walking through uh, the the um the somebody's fall from grace essentially just you know completely <laughs> you know the road to ruin when we, in. when we check in next we're gonna check in a year from now and you'll yeah, be right live the broadcasting wagon. from the bowery wearing a barrel yeah, yeah, a barrel exactly <laughs> and just but with like more props screen news behind barrel, you. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so, one of, so like, one i want to say some jaws the beginning Dave. of the end <laughs> i want to say it, something yeah. that uh, uh i i sort of noticed and uh, you can, you know, you can correct me, um, you know, because I did the podcast with Dave talking about the art he's going to sell for his uh, X-Wing. Yes, which, which I listened to, which I was, right? I was I fascinated by. Yeah. So he's willing to shrink his my Dave comic time. art. He, he's willing to shrink his comic art collection to grow his prop collection. Uh, and like I said, I don't want to do that. But on the other hand, I just found it interesting that he's not willing to trade like his favorite art for the X-Wing, but he would trade that art for other art. So I don't know what that means, um, mm -hmm. but I, I, it's something I, I noticed. Well, I guess, I mean, I, I definitely, you know, and we talked about this on your on your show, Felix, but for our listeners who perhaps didn't, and by the way, we'll put up links if anybody wants to see me on Felix's show talking about sort of the how I'm paying, I guess, I guess that's the honest answer, how I'm going about sort of raising funds to pay for the X-Wing with comic art and i guess it is just this thing of i'm lucky enough to have a collection where i am you know very deep on certain artists and don't get me wrong every piece hurts a little bit but i am getting rid of things where i do feel like in my collection i have pieces that are similar again we're talking about one of one pieces but i have similar pieces by the same artist from the same you know, comic storyline or whatever that I prefer. So if you're, you know, you're asking me like a, an apple and orange choice, I guess if I could only have one, I'd rather have this one. And so I'm selling that one. And in some cases, and again, I'm not trying to be an asshole about it. It's not that I only have two and I'm selling one. Sometimes I have, I have seven, I have seven and I'm selling one. No, that is true. And, and by the way, maybe it'll be, I have seven and I'm going to sell ultimately two or three of them. Because I don't know, at some point it all makes you more have sense. You seven stormtroopers yeah. now, Dave, as well. So <laughs> no, now I only have eight. I got another one. Oh, um, but uh, <laughs> no. It, I mean, it is this thing of you know. I'm. I guess I'm. I guess I'd rather sell that stuff than certainly some of my props, which I guess I don't feel like I have. Although I guess I am thinking about selling one of the stormtroopers. So I guess it all it all equals out. I don't have an answer, but it's how I'm approaching it. But I yeah, definitely I got, feel like I have things that I can let go of. I guess that's the real, the real point I guess I'm trying to make. <laughs> okay. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm all over the place. Feel free to cut this yeah. out. No. But you know, I, I love the stormtrooper discussion. You just brought up stormtroopers and made me think and uh, how, uh, how your dad would disapprove and how he would never let you have a duplicate stormtrooper action figure right. as a kid. And it reminded me when I was like five, you know, super friends was on TV. Migo, uh, you know those the figures were, were oh, the best everyone yeah. wanted I, and uh, i was begging for them begging for them from my parents and my dad sat me down and said okay i'll give you a choice you can have two migo action figures or i'll get you a bike a bike and i said Two Mego action figures. Two Mego action figures. And he's like, he's like, no, 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 no. Let, let, let me, let me, let's, let's noodle this out a little more. Okay, I can give you two Mego action figures, and that's all you're going to get. You're going to get two Mego action figures, but with a bike, it's got utility. You can ride it. You can even get a paper. You get a job. You can then buy all the Mego action figures you want. So I'm going to give you another two chance. Two Mego action figures. <laughs> yeah. And I remember even thinking, like, okay, this is a do-over. Uh, clearly, he wants me to say bike. And I, if I'm smart, I'll say bike. But also, if I say bike, he might take me seriously. So, yeah, two Mego action figures, two Mego action figures. And my dad just, you know, his head sank. And I never saw such disappointment. But it also explains how, how I am how I am today. Most yeah, important question, which two, did, which two did you get? Superman and Batman, of course. Yeah. yeah. 
Mego action. I had me. I had, I played and loved my Mego action figures when I was a kid. And when I uh, when I first moved to L.A. and you know, again, I'm uh, you know, it's it's sort of part of my art collecting as well. But it's the I'm working at Seinfeld. I'm living in a rental apartment, driving a leased car, and I am at the office. You know, basically being sort of I'm living at the office. I'm being fed there, and you know, like you know, I have very little expenses in my life. And I put together uh, first a carded set of Migos and then a box set of Migos. I still have to this day. I mean, this is stuff I bought basically in 1995, but just basically every one of the figures, most of the vehicles and whatnot, uh, did some of the Star Trek figures, did some of the Planet of the Apes figures, but the superhero ones are just my just be all end all absolute favorite. I mean, that is, that is my youth in a nutshell, maybe even slightly more than star Wars because I had them. I had them sort of both a little bit before star Wars and through star Wars, if that makes, that sure. makes any sense. Yeah. And I yeah. just, I just love those things. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to say one last thing um, because we started off by saying, you know, I, I listened to podcasts and I was, I was really scared uh, because part of it too, is I do a podcast <laughs> and I, I I hear from a lot of people like oh I listened to your podcast and it, it either re- reinvigorated them or introduced it to them and uh, you know then now they're getting divorced so I you know <laughs> that's that's what I'm that's that's what I have in my head too but what I forgot is I also hear from a lot of people who tell me they listen to the show just because they like listening to the stories they like listening to the passion of the people who yeah. collect yeah and, and so so then I realized I you know what I. I should try to approach stuff dreams are made of from that angle too. So, you know, since I haven't even opened this thing up in two months or however long it's been, I've still continued listening to the show and I think I'm good. I think I'm one of, I think I'm going to be one of those people. You're going to be okay, Philip. You're, you're not. not. You, you are so not. I can just tell you you're not. I, yeah, I, I'm screwed. I'm screwed. You are so I'm, I'm screwed. screwed. Yeah. It's kind of great. I, I'm yeah. going to enjoy watching every moment of it. Uh, and I'll be there to tell you about information on the props that you're going to be bidding on. It'll be very exciting. Uh, um, should we play the game? Yes. Is there a game to be played? I was trying to think of, is there the right movie? Is it Raiders? I mean, I mean we've, I, we've probably we've done We've done Raiders. Raiders. We've yeah. done Aliens a million times. Is there, um, I mean, John Woo, I don't even know what I'd pick other than guns. What? Yeah. What's another movie you love, Felix, that we haven't talked about? Is there another movie Mid- that's Mid- on Mid- your list? Another, mo- another movie with a perfect screenplay, Midnight Run. Okay. Okay. Midnight Run is a great one. And actually, that has a couple of, it has some props in it. I actually think it does have some props. What's your go-to, what's your dream prop for Midnight Run? It's a movie we've never really talked about before. Um, I should say, it, I, I assume, it's... I assume the audience knows Charles Grodin, Robert De Niro. Yeah. It's probably the first of Robert De Niro sort of being funny a little bit on purpose that then caused a lot of really terrible movies, but this one is absolutely perfect. Yeah. I, I have candidates and they would include no guns, actually no guns, but, uh, the sunglasses, the sunglasses, the Alonzo the, Mosley, uh, yep. uh, 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 the Alonzo Mosley badge, but I think I would narrow it down to the cuffs, the handcuffs. Oh, the handcuffs are good that he's constantly okay. got him in. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and they're and they they they're linked together too later. Yeah. How about you, Ryan? I mean, I think of that. I haven't seen that movie in a long yeah. time. Uh, um, I, I I always just think of the leather jacket, <laughs> and I know it's just like no, it's but just it's a, a good jacket, look. It's, it's just a very like I think thing, of the yeah. image that that comes to that comes to mind. It, it, is am I like projecting a memory? Is there there is a MacGuffin in that movie, right? The thing that they're yeah, carrying. Well, right? the, 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 Serrano's the, got the disc. Serrano's exactly, got the disc. Yeah, there's exactly, like yeah, those, yeah. there's like these discs yeah. at the end. I'm not sure I could tell you but what you they look them? like. You do because yeah, they yeah, kind of yeah. like take them yeah, and then he yeah. takes them and whatever. Yeah. So they definitely have those things. I like your leather jacket suggestion. I also think there's that long, I don't know what to call it, like sort of wool overcoat that Groden's wearing. I, that's how yeah. I always think of them as the leather jacket and the yeah, overcoat yeah, yeah, yeah. when they're kind of like you know, the running image on for the, the, plane. the poster or, the, yeah. or the, the VHS box or whatever. Yeah. And I thought about the discs too. I was thinking for me, I was thinking a little bit about the watch, you know, I'll, t- I'll, I'll tell you when Perfect. I know you better. Perfect. The watch yeah, yeah, is really yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was thinking about the watch, but I think honestly, I would ultimately go with the badge because I think, I think the the badge, either the original version where it's got uh, Alonzo's picture on it, or the version where he puts his own picture on it, but it still says Alonzo Mosley FBI. Mm-hmm. I don't know that that really does jump out at me, and it's a it's a it's a it, it both is a story point, but also there's, they get some good humor out of it. You know, when he keeps saying, "I thought you said your name was Alonzo Mosley," you know that whole thing. So I don't know that to me is a great prop because it sort of 
it plays both story and joke wise. I think I'm going to go with the, the bad, yeah. pre preferably yeah. when De Niro's picture's on it. Yeah. I'm going to change my answer to the okay. watch because the watch <laughs> is something he gives to Grodin. He says, this is yeah. something to remember yeah. our adventure by and, it, and everything it represents. And isn't that what prop collecting is? It's something to remember our adventure by from these movies that we love well so much. Well said. Well yeah. said. I like that. I like that very much. Um, please check out, uh, Felix, what's your website? What's the Felix comic art website? FelixComicArt.com. FelixComicArt.com. You can check out the Felix Comic Art podcast on Download Apple podcast. Podcasts and everything. Yep. And the Felix Comic Art YouTube channel where he puts up uh, a lot of his live videos. And then sometimes there are some of the podcasts, but then also sometimes like I did a art deep dive where like and other collectors have done where we sort of you show off like five pieces from people's collections and those are on your youtube channel as well right that's kind that's of correct. everything correct yeah yep. yep uh and if you're interested in comic art and you don't know felix well i'm not sure you're really interested in comic art but anyway uh please check out his amazing stable of artists um cool uh thank you felix this was fantastic our first thank unboxing you, yeah very cool All right, thanks a lot guys thank yeah. you um, anything else we want to say to our uh, our audience? Uh, download, subscribe, follow us on uh, on all the social channels at Props Podcast. Uh, rate us five stars. Uh, tell your friends. Uh, tell your comic book collector friends. Yeah. Uh, tell your get tell your yeah. tell your podcasts about uh, about us. And uh, and, and come by back the way, next we'd week. love to hear. Write us and tell us if we've gotten you to buy your first prop, like Felix. Yes, if we you would started, love to do that. Yeah. If you started as a non collector and then now have now dipped your toe into prop buying please email us at i don't know something dreams are made of podcast at gmail.com it's been a little while dave but yes, yes. we're gonna uh, get back in the hang of it yeah thank you everybody thank you felix and we will see you next week bye everyone <laughs>